My name is Heather White. I'm a volunteer with Save the River from Clayton, New York, doing another story time today. Today's story is my little book of painted turtles written by Hope Irvin Marston. And I wanted to give you just a couple turtle facts before we read the book. The painted turtle has a relatively flat upper shell. Its face has yellow stripes and a little yellow marking. And then along the neck, legs, and tail, you'll see red and a little bit of yellow. Their habitat is a bay along a river, ponds, and streams. These turtles like to live where the water moves a little more slowly. They have special adaptations that help them where they live. They have webbed feet so that they can move quickly in the water. And really fun, think about their jaws. The painted turtle does not have teeth but their jaws are like sandpaper. The sandpaper texture that lines their jaw helps them to hold their food in place while they eat. Their shells are made of bony plates called scoots. You can count the rings on a shell to figure out the age of a turtle much the way we count the rings on a tree to see how old a tree is. The painted turtles like to eat fish, worms, insects, and aquatic plants. Wanted to show you one more little fun thing before we start our story time. I have a model here of a log. Look at how the turtles are piled together on each other. They do this because they are constantly working to be the top turtle to get as close to the sun's rays as possible. Basking in the sun, they collect the UV rays for their shells, and it also protects them from infection. A bale of turtles is a group of turtles. Now let's open this beautiful book and see about the painted turtle. My Little Book of Painted Turtles, written by Hope Irvin Marston. A painted turtle squeezed herself between a dozen others on the log in the pond. She stretched her leathery neck, stuck out her legs, and spread her webbed toes. From a distance, the turtles looked like little green helmets with red and yellow designs painted around the edges. The sunlight warmed them and helped their bones grow strong. Suddenly, a mink surfaced and headed towards them. Plop, 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 plop. The turtles tumbled into the shallow water and burrowed into the mud. The mink swam away. One by one, the turtles came out of hiding. They poked their heads into the weeds to look for bugs. They chased tadpoles and tiny fish. They yanked a few leaves from under plants with their toothless jaws. Munch, munch, munch but beetles and frogs taste better. The turtle swam toward the shore. She crawled up the bank. As she moved along on her slender legs, she smelled danger. Quick as lightning, she pulled her head and her neck inside her shell. Her legs and her tail disappeared too. A fox burst from the swamp. He spotted Turtle and sniffed at her. 
He put one paw on her shell. He felt, she felt the weight, but it didn't hurt. The fox nudged her once again and then trotted off. Safe inside her shell, the turtle waited. The ground was still. She knew the fox had run away. Ever so slowly, she stuck her head out and looked around. Out came her legs one by one, and she crawled back to the pond. The turtle slipped into the water and gobbled up some dragonfly larva. A male turtle swam toward her. He reached out and gently tickled her neck. Soon she tapped him on his front legs. Together the two turtles sank to the bottom of the pond. After a while, they swam away. About six weeks later, the female turtle crawled out of the pond. She crept along a path until she found just the right place to build her nest. She clawed at the ground to break it up and make it soft. She began to dig with her hind feet. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. She placed the dirt on the edge where she could reach it later to cover her eggs. She scooped out the bottom of the nest to make it wider. The turtle laid an egg and moved to the side with her foot. She was careful not to turn it over. She continued until she had eight soft-shelled eggs arranged carefully in her nest. She pushed the dirt back over them and packed it down so her eggs would be hidden. Back in the water, she rested. She floated. She swam around underwater, and she chased after water worms and insects. When she needed air, she popped her head out of the water. After the sun came out, she crawled onto a rock to warm herself. For about 75 days, the sun warmed the ground and incubated those eggs. Each tiny turtle grew an egg tooth on its snout to help pip the shell. It took several days for the eight baby turtles to work their way out of the eggs. The newborn turtles, called hatchlings, were about the size of a nickel. Each was born with a tiny belly button on its shell. The egg yolk inside their bodies was all the food they needed for the winter. The turtles crawled around the nest until they were comfortable. Then they huddled together and went to sleep. The hatchlings would stay snug in their nest until spring came. When the days became colder, the adult turtles sank to the bottom of the pond. They burrowed into the soft mud to keep warm. Their breathing slowed down, and they slept all winter. Spring came, bringing lots of sunshine. The water warmed, and the sleeping turtles woke. They wandered around the bottom of the pond. They sunned themselves in places where the sun was shining through the ice. The melted ice and the snow warmed the earth. The hatchlings dug their way out of the nest and scrambled toward the pond. They almost reached it when a crow spotted them. It swooped down and tried to grab the last tiny turtle. The eight Hatchlings tumbled into the pond and safely disappeared. The sun rose higher in the sky. The turtles climbed onto, the, onto some flat rocks. They stuck out their legs and spread their webbed toes. The sunlight warmed them and helped their bones grow strong. I gathered a few items around my house and from the kitchen, first to give you an activity idea, and then to give you a little challenge. Bowl of water, 
collect some items and just test them. See what might float. See what might sink. What do you think this will do? I think you're right. It'll probably sink. Here's one, a golf tee. What do you think that will do? Sink or float? Remember in our story, the turtles would sink down to the bottom of the water. Oh, that one floats. So after you've had a little bit of fun just exploring the items that you've collected from around your house, I have a little challenge for you. I think this is interesting. So I have this little boat, and let's see if it'll float. Yes. Now I have a rock. Let's drop that in, see what happens. Oh, right to the bottom. I have another rock. Oops, about the same size. And let's see what happens with this rock. Hmm. In the boat, the rock can float inside the boat. This brings me to our challenge. Get a piece of aluminum foil, and you see what I did is I took it and I folded it a few times. Then I want you to try to form your own boat. Make your boat, and then experiment what you can put in your boat and keep your boat afloat. So I didn't do a very good job, but let's just try my boat. Let's see. Now we did the marble previously and it went right to the bottom. Let's see if it goes in the boat. Oh, the boat is still floating. How many items can you put in your boat and have your boat remain afloat. Then play around with your bot, the model of your boat, change your aluminum foil, and see what your boat can hold while it remains afloat. Have fun with this challenge. It could be a contest with your brother and sister or in your classroom with your friends at school. Have fun, and you can find more story times more activities on Save the Rivers website at www.savetheriver.org.